one day I can remember where I was in the orchard and looking at this organic orchard was wonderful that it functions as an organic orchard, but it doesn't function as an ecosystem. I didn't like emphasizing, well, let's stop the negative. I'd rather take my energy and say, okay, what should we do? And so we tore out uh, most of the trees and began replanting in a permaculture design, not a monocultural design, not just an apple tree orchard design, but right away as a, as a mixed planting. So the basis of the design is the trios, nitrogen fixer, then an apple, then a pear or a plum, could be a cherry. And so that nitrogen fixer fixes all the nitrogen or gives all the fertility needed to the fruit trees on either side. That's just the fruit trees, it would also be the fruit shrubs and other plants as well that you put. The great beauty of these planting design in a, in a three different species configuration is that if an insect lands in one, for example in the apple tree, he can't go into the nitrogen fixer because there's predators there waiting for him. He can't go into the pear and even if he does, he doesn't, he doesn't affect the pear. And so he's got a far way to go till he reaches the next apple. It's every three trees would be an apple. And the next apple is not even the same cultivar. When we were certified organic, we had 12 uh, cultivars of apples, just apples. Now we have, just in apples, we have over 100 cultivars. We have 18 cultivar pears, several plums, cherries. We have a whole range of cherries, I think about seven. Peaches planted, we have uh, pawpaws planted, we have kiwis, grapes, mulberries, small fruit, uh, gooseberries, uh, red currants, black currants. Saskatoon berries. Basically our goal is anything that will grow as a fruit in southern Quebec, we want to have it. We put both annual and mostly perennial vegetables now in the permaculture orchard. So the goal being once it's established, we don't have to be replanting. But we still take advantage of spots where we have sun, for example on the, uh, at the base of the honeysuckles which is our nitrogen fixer, we put climbing plants. So eventually we will have grapes on all of them and kiwi on all of them. But in the meantime, we still can grow cucumbers, peas, and beans. So all our climbers go on our nitrogen fixing trees. Once all this variety kicks in, once it's getting going and it's established, then the insects come, then the birds come. We have snakes now, like. We've never seen so many snakes. We have all kinds of frogs. One day when the honey locusts were in bloom, I stopped for 10 minutes just to do a survey, a quick survey of what's going on. You could hear the insects in that tree. In 10 minutes, I counted 36 species. Species, not individuals. They were hundreds in one branch. Bees are in big trouble, I hear. Big trouble huge losses. I wouldn't know. We went from four hives that wintered over. We started with eight in the fall and there was only four survived. So yeah, there is big losses. We lost 50% of our hives. But we went from four hives to 23 hives during the summer. Basically because the bees have so much of an abundance of food through the succession and the biodiversity of trees. The honey locusts flower almost up to the end of June. And in between May 1st and the end of June, there is some tree in the whole succession of trees that is flowering. So that, instead of having 10 days of apple blooms, we now have 60 days of tree blooms before the main honey flow of uh, clover. There is some work, but it's so much less and, and the abundance are, is really there to prove I have nothing to envy conventional orchardists. I haven't fertilized this block 
since it was planted in 2007. So that's six years, no fertility, no, not no, ferti no fertilizer. Nobody does that. Everybody fertilizes, not just every year, but sometimes several times in the year. The output is huge, not just in, in diversity, but in, in taste. We had an open day this weekend, so people would come and they'd, you give them one of these plums and they go, excuse me, and after they tasted one, they say, that's crazy. You never taste such a, a sweet and delicious plum in the store. Of course, the whole system is not geared towards taste. It's geared to shelf life. It's not a system that's geared to giving you the maximum pleasure. And one of my goals for the farm is bringing back the wow in food. We've lost the wow. How often do you get wowed by food in the grocery store? If you go down the row, everything is by a certain date. We function with 10 day windows. So if say now we're early September, we're picking in rows that all the trees will be ripe in a 10 day window. It's either the apples or the pears or the plums. They're all ready in this window. It's efficient because you go down the rows and you can pick. So even if you don't do a direct marketing and somebody wants to pick everything and take it to market, they still only have to go down certain lanes on certain dates. So you can simply have two or three boxes with you and depending which tree you're picking, you would put it in a separate box. We have huge abundance here, surpluses of all kinds of things. We just had an open day. We are giving 160 pounds of apples to members. Come pick, it's free. That's four bushels. Most people didn't even take, they didn't know what to do if they took four bushels. That's part of the abundance. So yes, we think of that ethic of sharing the surplus as sharing with people. And that's true. We should, but we shouldn't forget that that principle really has two sides to it. Sharing the surplus with people and sharing the surplus with nature. We don't need to have the attitude that, oh, we have a certain insect in the orchard that's eating one of my fruit. Oh, we have birds coming and pecking some of my fruit. What's wrong with sharing some of your harvest with them? They're working day and night to take care of your orchard for you. I've had people just walking around shaking their head like they were in a daze because they said, everything I've learned, everything I've done in my orchard is contrary to what I see here. It, uh, it makes sense what I see, but it doesn't jive with what I know and what I've done. So the future is getting enough people to see that one, it's possible, two, it's viable, and three, it makes so much sense. Why am I not doing it? The only thing wrong with these plums is you can never eat just one. Mm -hmm.